I only, I only did this so that people wouldn't think that I don't talk and you know, <clears throat> I'm a robot, right? So I kind of like added her to my list along with my dad. Yo, 2022 and the years before, maybe like four of those years, it's a very unique age. Even if you were to rewind about 10 years ago, the way that things go on today are not the way that they had gone on at that point. And the parallel to be drawn today is in relation to the coaches of elite CrossFit athletes, the best in the space. So if you were to rewind about a decade ago, people like me were non-existent. And the only way in which you're going to get people like me is if they come through the CrossFit ecosystem. It's almost top down. Or it's who have you worked with. So in the video yesterday, I talked about Craig Ritchie. He makes some videos with Matt Fraser, makes some videos with Rich Froning. Everybody catches onto his YouTube channel and boom, I haven't made videos with anybody. Um, not really, at least. I got nothing. But in the modern age, you know, present day, not 10 years ago, I started the YouTube channel. Now, for some reason, people want to hear the things that I have to say. And now that I mention it, when I talk about subscribing... I'm gonna pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. I jerk off at least twice a day. I've noticed more people subscribe to my video, so thank you for doing that again. And if you would like to, subscribe. Hear more stuff like the stuff I'm gonna say in this video. Which brings me to J.R. Howell. He's an individual that I had never heard of until I saw him on the Sevon podcast. And in a way, he kind of did make his come up along with a big name, Taylor Self and Jason Hoppers of the world. I know we don't believe in coincidences, but um... Yeah, this is a play on something something to where Jason Hopper is currently. I don't know all that much on the subject. I don't know shit about fuck. But I know that Jason Hopper is under the wing of Matt Fraser, the champion. And I've spoken about this in relation to Mal O'Brien. Leaving James Townsend, it's like, it's a very smart business move on her end. And it's probably even likely a smart training move on her end. Smart in the same way where it's intelligent for Katrin David's daughter to leave Ben Bergeron along with Amanda Barnhart to go work with that same person, Matt Fraser. However, when I think Jason Hopper, I think of someone that I'd never heard of. Someone who came up with a coach in the space. And I already mentioned him, J.R. Hopper and like really sets his foot in the freaking ground at that first semifinal. What was it? The Mac? He wins. Beats Scott Panchek. Beats Justin Medeiros. The guy who had won the games the year previous. Like a fucking train out of hell. He's coming into the CrossFit games and everyone's like, what the hell? Where did this guy come from? Well, he's naturally gifted. Very high level and almost NFL level football receiver, I believe. But he came up with that coach. And that is who we're talking about today. The guy that if it weren't for the modern era, I don't even know if anybody would know about J.R. Howell. In the beginning clip, right before I said yo, he says something like I just was just doing this so that people didn't think that I was a robot. I only, I only did this so that people wouldn't think that I don't talk and you know, I'm a robot, right? I think that there's a little bit of hardwiring to people like him that make him as good as he is. And if his track record at this point hasn't spoken for itself as far as predicting what the CrossFit Games workouts could have been, and if you've listened to that entire episode, you'll know the thought and care that goes into everything, I'm going to see what I can do to prove to you that he is potentially, if not the best coach in the CrossFit space in the modern era. Let's go. You don't have any memories of your dad um, playing basketball. I don't know. I, I, remember, I remember doing something in high school or college that I thought was good, like scoring a certain amount of points and he was like oh yeah i think i averaged that many my sophomore year in high school i can probably recall the instances until i was in college that he said you played well tonight so no and did you think about that no because it was normal to me to get critiqued and i mean it's this the same way guys like jason guys like taylor other my members at the gym that i have as much of a mentor role with as i do a coach jason just posted that he did a 603 2k row right it's insane. Wow. It's insane. Wow. And I was going to walk in the gym for six o'clock. I walked in the gym and the rower was still there. And he walked up to me and said, hey, look what I did. And he showed me the screen. And I looked at the screen. And then I said, you were supposed to do five by 1,000 meter repeats. And I walked away. Oh, and wow. It's like, and it's like, dude, I should have like, I should have given him so much praise. And I should have given him so much like, but like, he's going to get that everywhere. But as a coach, and what does he need to hear right now, right? What does he need to hear? He needs to hear, do your program. <laughs> Inside, are you jumping up and down for no, him? And you're like, crazy. No, no, no. I can appreciate it. And I think it's amazing. But in the moment, no. I, I, in the moment, the first thing that came to my head is the first thing that came out of my mouth.
You hear that bit in the beginning where he mentions that, oh, dad, I had a good game. Oh, you know, son, I, uh, I averaged that many points when I was in high school. And, you know, I played D1. That's D3. It's just knowing where you're at. Hey, you know what, JR, from, you know, JR's dad? I think that you should be shooting to be doing that in every single game. Don't just, like, you know, have a good game and like, expect a pat on the back and, you know, we're going to go out for dinner, la-di-da. What you need to do is know where you're at and how do you want to get to be as good as you think that you want to be, or at least as good as your dad or your coach in that position would want you to develop into. And it shows when he has that talk with Jason Hopper. Hey, look what I did, a 603 2K row. Fucking insane 2K row time. I don't think anyone other than maybe James Sprague in the space can go that quick on the rower, but he says to him, it doesn't matter. This is what you were supposed to do. It's going to lead you to a better 2K row time in the future. And maybe not even that, but the training stimulus that you would have gotten from that is what's going to lead to you having a more successful season, which is what it's all about. Don't take the short-term gain to detract from the long-term goal. Ironically enough, you look at the comments section and one of the first comments up there is from his current coach and training partner. It's like, yeah, let's go. Nice job on that row. But what he needs to hear right there, in my opinion, is that it doesn't matter. There is a purpose to this. Stop looking for gratification right now because it's going to take away from what your gratification is going to be at the end of the season. Yeah, I think that might be one of the reasons why I don't have boys. I think God knew how hard I would be on them, and I'm hard on my daughters. The girls oh, have the girls have made me Charmin, Charmin soft. Like you know, I need I probably needed that because inevitably, I mean, I am my dad, right? Now I I play that father son role with 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 other people and not necessarily my offspring right why isn't so and so playing more and my dad was like i don't even want to i don't even want to speak to your coach he, he didn't want me to ever get any kind of treatment but i knew he was going to be a lot more critical of me than my coach or anyone else was going to be I kind of mesh two parts there number one is he says that he's a little softer than he used to be because he had daughters but he thinks that that was on purpose because now when he works with the people that he coaches, whether it be the athletes at the high level or his everyday members, he understands that there is a balance to it. But he still has that tidbit in the back of his head, which says his dad wasn't ever going to help him out. At the end of the day, it's all about what you've done. What have you prepared to do that's going to lead to your own success? I'm not always going to be there to tell your coach to throw you in the game because you need playing time. And everyone knows that or has at least heard that story. It's like, why isn't my son in? Well, it's like, well, your son fucking sucks and he's not going to be the starting pitcher on this baseball team. My dad was the coach of a couple of these teams, and you know what he'd do? He's like, all right, go ahead and try catcher. Oh, you couldn't catch the fucking ball? You're not the catcher ever again until you can catch the fucking ball. And you know what I learned really quickly? Either I didn't want to be the catcher that bad, or when it came to playing third base, learn how to field a fucking rocket right at your fucking face. So you know what I did? Did my best to figure that out. Don't be afraid of the ball. Get over it. Don't wear a cup. You don't wear a cup, you gotta pay the fucking consequences of a ball kicking up in the dirt and hit you in the balls. Second video in a row where I'm talking about getting hit in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have someone over the top of you, whether it be a father figure or a coach who's going to try to dig you out of situations, you never learn to do it yourself. My dad told me, you don't need to plan on playing college basketball. You need to figure out where you're going to school. You haven't been recruited by anybody and you're a junior. So I proceeded to eat nothing but wheat thins and tuna for three months and I lost 30 pounds. And then when we went to team what, camp. Wait, when was this? What year was this? When I was 17. You were chub You were chubby? Chubby my whole life, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just made that comment, and I was like, okay, because you think I can't is why I'm going to be able to. So, was that I, instant? Were you were conscious of that? Oh, yeah. I, so, like, I lost 30 pounds in like, where two were you months. standing when he not said it safe. to you? I was not, I was sitting. Where were you sitting? On the couch. Were you just the two of you in the room? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty maniacal in my pursuit to prove him wrong. And that's all I really cared about. My dad did this and I learned this. My dad did this and then I learned this. My mom did this and then I did this because of it. Over and over again, you hear JR talking about how important his dad was in his role of upbringing to becoming what I think to be the best coach or one of them in the CrossFit space. Lesson after lesson after lesson just burned into the back of his brain and now he is giving those lessons to the people that he will work with. If anything, it's just the harsh reality of the situation and imagine what it's like. You have a child who's overweight. JR states that he's overweight right here. About 30 pounds overweight his dad says to him oh don't worry you'll get him next year let's go don't worry just keep your head down he tells him 
you know, you might want to look into college because you're never going to make a living off of this. JR hears that and it freaking pings him to do the freaking tuna fish and wheat thins diet. Loses 30 pounds and then because of that conversation, he does exactly what his dad says that he can't do. He said that he was maniacal towards it. And the reason that I know that this sort of shit works is because I went through an experience like this when I was a wrestler in high school. Senior year, let's go. It's going to be the best thing ever. And then I started off the year like dog shit. The coach sits me down and he goes, you know what? I think that you should just take a couple of weeks off. Take it easy. And I'm like, what the fuck? You, you, it's my senior year. You want me to stop wrestling? Are you out of your fucking mind? Take it easy. So I tripled, doubled down. I loosened up. I did whatever the fuck I wanted to do. And it was like, uh, because you said I can't, that's exactly why I am going to. I think it's incredibly important in athletics to just be given the hard truth as often as you can. And if you can't take the hard truth and you want to live with your head in the clouds along with everybody in your comment section saying that, oh, it's okay. Whoa, it's me, blah, blah, blah. You're never going to learn anything and you're never going to end up at the top of the podium. And by the way, everyone's podium is very different. Not everyone's going to be Matt Fraser, Rich Froning, Tia Toomey, Katrin, David's daughter. Some people, the podium might be making the CrossFit Games. For some people, the podium might be finishing in the top thousand in the open. Everyone's got their stuff, but if you want to attain the goals that you're going for, you've got to realize that sometimes you are your own worst enemy. And it's through hard conversations like that that JR had with his dad that he picked up on that and now he's given it to everyone that crosses his path in the future. It's super cool. As I'm editing this, I realize that I will not be able to shrink it down in anything under 20 minutes, which will deter people from clicking on it in the first place, seeing how long it might be. So I'm going to be turning this into a two-parter. So number one, like I said somewhere in the beginning, subscribe to the freaking YouTube channel. 50% of people apparently don't even subscribe, but they still watch the videos. If you watch, you might as well be alerted that they're going to be coming at you. And tomorrow, the one that'll be coming at you is part two of why J.R. Howell is the best coach in the CrossFit space. And Riller, out.